So in my previous video, I was explaining the, the, video, the meat lab and cereal dilution video. I was explaining how the purpose of this uh, lab was to identify how many original cells we had in our uh, one gram of meat. And if we looked at these cells directly, it would, there, would, there are just too many of them uh, to, to be able to identify the exact number. There would be a whole carpet of cells if there, that was plated on an agar plate, too many to count. Um, and that's why we created these uh, serial dilutions. Uh, so two dilutions in a row. Actually, there were uh, three dilutions overall. And then we plated a specific volume. And then after growth uh, took place, we counted the number of colonies that resulted from that volume plated from that particular dilution. Uh, I also uh, reminded you that one cell, when it lands on a plate, after multiple division, it leads to one colony. All of these cells are um, uh, basically clones of each other. Uh, and uh, this, this colony is what we call a pure colony. So when you count a colony, you're actually counting uh, how many original cells landed on these different spots on the plate. So that's why we use the term colony forming units. It's these cells that form colonies. These units, the cells that form colonies, how many colony forming units did we have uh, in that gram of meat? That's the question. And there's a particular formula to figure that out. We uh, count the number of colonies that we can see on the plate and remember uh, if we if we plated the original gram there would just be too many so when we're counting colonies it comes from a dilution so we have to take that into account uh, so the volume that we plate is important and the dilution is important So, uh, when you factor in the dilution, and you factor in how much you actually plated, and you count the number of colonies from that dilution with that volume plated, you're able to um, basically get a number of what was the original number of cells in that gram of meat. So that's the formula. So let's maybe practice a couple of times. Um, let's see. So if we counted a uh, number of colonies uh, in plate A, let's say there were um, 40. 40 colonies. And the volume plated was 1 ml, right? We plated 1 ml um, and we counted 40 colonies. So if we use the formula, the colony forming units, the number of colony forming units is the number of colonies that we counted on that final plate, the volume that we had plated times the dilution uh, that we used. So if we go back, right, that's the volume that we plated on plate A, and the dilution comes from that uh, blue bottle right here. The final dilution was a thousand. So that's a, a dilution, the dilution factor was a thousand. So the actual dilution was one to one thousand. The dilution is expressed as one to one thousand. Or we can also say, uh, a dilution factor of a thousand but here in the uh, in the formula it's dilution that we need so one to one thousand that's it and that will give you the number of colony forming units now mathematically when you have one to one thousand in um, the denominator, 
When you have a fraction like that, it is the equivalent of saying, or of writing, 40 times 1,000. over 1. So that 1 to 1,000 uh, is also can also be written this way. That's also the CFU. So that would be 40 times 1,000. So that's 40,000 over 1, which means it's 40,000. 40,000. That's the number of CFU in that 1 gram of meat. So 1 gram of meat. That's what we started with. And we're looking at how many cells do we have in that one gram of meat. That's the answer, 40,000 cells. Um, so this formula is actually the equivalent of saying number of colonies times dilution factor. over volume plated. So for those of you who like dilution factor, um, that's another way of writing that same equation to get to the number of CFUs. Uh, I like dilution factor because it's uh, not a fraction then, it's a, a number I diluted 10 times, I diluted 100 times, uh, 1,000 times, 100,000 times. I like that personally. So, but when you use a dilution factor, that comes on um, the numerator. So you count your number of colonies, number of colonies, multiply this by your dilution factor, divide this by the number of volume plated, and we come back to the same answer. So in the industry uh, where for meat production, it's very important to know that number and to have an accurate count uh, because it uh, implies that the food is safe if it's under a specific count. So for example, if we, uh, I'm using an example, uh, boneless beef produced by um, uh, AMS vendors is sampled and tested for the following indicator microorganisms. So I'm reading here from uh, their website, standard plate count, uh, total coliforms, and generic E. coli with critical limits of 100,000 colony forming units, CFU. So they mentioned that on their site, colony forming units per gram. So it's CFU per gram of meat. So this uh, one, uh, uh, 100,000 CFU per grams is for um, uh, for mesophilic aerobic plate counts, total coliforms, and generic E. coli. So this would be for the first type, mesophilic aerobic uh, plate counts, coliforms, uh, is actually the limit is uh, much stricter. It's a thousand CFU per gram, and generic E. coli is even uh, stricter. It's 500 CFU per gram for E. coli. So let's just concentrate on this one. So. Uh, So in the uh, industry, we have these different uh, uh, limits that are critical limits uh, for um, allowing the sale of specific meat.